Daryl Rosen, your financial strength coach and the awkward face and personality behind the Get Financial Strength Now YouTube channel. This is part two of a six part series for future retirees where I share five do's and one giant don't for people who are retiring at some point in the future. In the last video, we examined the question, what are you gonna do with the abundance of time you have on your hands? You could say our first do was do something. We talked about developing core pursuits. If you haven't watched that video, please do so. I share how my father's retirement is causing me to think hard about what changes I need to make as I make my way through life. To make sure you see all the other videos, hit subscribe, just like this, so you can get them. As a refresher, our pre-retirement questions are always, what are you gonna do? What will it cost? How are you gonna pay for it? What could go wrong? And what will your priorities be? In the final video, I'll share the worst thing you can do when you stop working. It's a doozy. Today's topic, what will retirement cost? So do you have an idea what you're currently spending and how that might change in the future? Here's what I fear and why it's so important to take this seriously. I don't know which is worse, spending too much of your nest egg too soon and running out of money later in life or spending too little and experiencing the opposite. I call that imprisonment. It's like being on the outside looking in on what might have been, the trips you might have taken, the hobbies you might have pursued, the causes you might have supported if you felt you had the resources. So we have to know, but often it's easier to sweep this subject under the nearest rug. Rate of return and asset diversification, those aren't emotional topics, but living life comfortably on your terms is a topic loaded with emotion, and it's usually much more difficult to consider. So if you haven't already, get an idea of what you're currently spending. Some experts say, oh, you need to replace 70 or 80% of your income, or that you need to spend a certain amount of your assets each year, like the 4% rule. I don't like that approach. I think it's lazy. Do the work to see what you're spending now and make some assumptions on how that might change in the future. Conventional wisdom is that you won't need to dry clean your work clothing and pay for tolls. But when you're retired, every day is Saturday and you may want to spoil your grandkids if you like them or buy a widescreen TV if you don't. Whatever the case, you'll be better off using a higher expense figure in your retirement calculations rather than the lower numbers that might look better on the calculator. Using a more conservative figure will provide more flexibility in later years because you'll spend less of your nest egg up front. You might not live life exactly in a manner that pleases you, but the downside of outliving your money will be much less likely. Daryl, do you think people like our videos? Beats me, how do we find out? We can ask them, how? Like this. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up below. Anything else? Yes, subscribe. This way you'll see our content right away. Tell the viewers why we do this to help them create safety, simplicity, and most of all, financial strength in the future. Got it. To subscribe, just click the button below. Now back to our regularly scheduled video. The elephant in the room is healthcare. We'll address that in video four, what could go wrong. It's a fun one. But for today though, I just want you to concentrate on your normal everyday life and expenses. Once you have your number, we'll need to break it down between needs, wants and aspirational spending, which covers things like vacations and legacy. You'll see in future videos that it's best that our sources of income, at the very least, cover all the needs and most of the wants. By the way, my purpose isn't to scare you and cause you to go live in a whole summer where your credit cards don't work. I don't even want my sons and my very favorite wife, Jill, to go somewhere where my credit cards don't work. It's just that my experience has taught me that people are too casual when it comes to this part of their plan. So please do the work, get the number, and we can go from there. There are always ways to tweak assumptions and confront challenges, but we have to start from somewhere. In the next video, we'll answer the question, how are you gonna pay for retirement? Yes, one day you'll get tired of working if that hasn't happened already, but the bills aren't gonna get tired of being paid.